Well, hello, everybody. Not in my garden this time, but in my kitchen. And I'm going to show you an activity using salt dough. Now, you might be familiar with salt dough because you might have made it at school or at home before. Here's a lump of salt dough that I made earlier. And I'm going to show you how to make it and then how we can use that to link up with the activities that Kim has put online as well for our Abbey Children's Church children and others this week. So making salt dough is very straightforward. You need some plain flour. I know that's a bit hard to get at the moment, but hopefully you can. Uh, salt and water. So the main thing to remember is whatever quantity of flour that you use, you then use half of that for the other two ingredients. So I've got 120 grams of plain flour. I'm going to add to that 60 grams of salt. I'm going to give that a quick stir around, make sure it's evenly distributed. And then I'm going to add 60 mils of water. Now, of course, it's always, always a little bit in give and take. Don't put it all in at once, just in case. You stir it up there, that obviously needs a little bit more. Keep stirring there. Make it into, make it a little bit lumpy. Actually, I'm going to have a tiny bit more water as well. And there, there we are. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little bit sticky with my hands and I'm just going to knead it here just like you would do with any other dough and you can see it's beginning to form a nice ball and of course the warmth of my hands as well helps that. I think I could do with a tiny bit more water. hope I don't put in too much of course but then if I do I can just add more flour. So here it goes, that's feeling good. It's feeling firm dough but it's got that little bit of damp there as well so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to knead it a bit more in my hands and now the next bit just shaping it. Now you could of course make a 3D model but I'm going to make a rather like a tile so I'm going to have a little bit of flour on my rolling pin and I'm going to roll it out till it's about a centimetre thick don't have to be completely precise of course and it's up to you what sort of shape you want to make it. You might like to be very precise and cut it into a square, you might like to make it into a circle. So I've been thinking about what we could put on this and I was looking at something that the daughter and a friend of mine made and she made salt dough here and she used the hands. And that's the hands of her and her husband and her children. They've obviously rubbed out the names. But you can see it says Lockdown 2020. And then they painted it. And then later on they were planning to put some PVA glue to make it shine. Now you could use hands. So once you've rolled it out, you would just literally place your hand in there. And then you press really hard or get somebody else to. And you can just about see the shape of my hand. And of course, what you could do is you could go round it as well to get to your shape. And you can hopefully you can just see there the fingers and the thumb. But you could make that much more obvious by going round with a pencil or a pastry cutter. Now, you might choose to use a hand or and I'm going to mush it up again. Or you might perhaps like to use your feet and put your footprints in there because that's always fun as well, isn't it? Um, and then the other thing you could do if you haven't, if you don't want to use your hands and feet, sometimes children don't like getting their feet or hands a bit messy, but you might use pastry cutters instead. So I was thinking, well, you could use a heart perhaps and make some heart shapes on your dough. Now you could actually cut them out like heart biscuits would be, but the thing about this plaque I like is that this is something that you could then perhaps keep. So I haven't gone all the way down, 
but hopefully you can see the shape there. So you could use a heart, or I'm going to just turn that over, give it a, whoops, oh, I'll have to mash it up again. That's the fun about salt dough. If you go wrong, it doesn't matter, does it? Because you just roll it out and squidge it up and start again. So the other thing I was just thinking you could do is use some people and perhaps you could have the people in your family as well that you would like to show and that would be great fun as well for painting there, something like that. Now once you've decided on your design you might like to write something, you might like to inscribe the date, anything like that you could do at this point if you want it cooked in or you could wait until it's all cooked and then paint it on. When you cook it, you need to put it in a very, very low, what we call a low oven, so a low temperature, and leave it there for about four or five hours until it's cooked. And you'll know it's cooked because it will be quite a nice sort of golden brown colour. Now you might think, well, what's the point of all this? Well, this week we're thinking about God's love for each of us. And for me, I think all of those symbols represent a part of God's love. So the hand might be a reminder that God's hand is, is, is with us, that God holds our hands. We use our hands to pray to God and that we use our hands to help other people to show love. Just like God loves us, we show that how we love other people. The footprint, well, again, you know, we're on a journey and sometimes we feel God is very close to us and other times we might not feel that so much. But God is always there and he's part of our journey and our footsteps are his footsteps. And then the heart, reminder of the love of God and the people. Well, it's no use unless we share our love with other people, is it? So have a go at this. Make your own salt dough tile. Maybe you could... Uh, take a photograph, send it to Kim, we'd love to see it. And as you're making your salt dough, just remember the people who love you, the people you love, and most of all, God's love.